up everybody uh welcome home again it was a long day today it's like nine o'clock or something i just got in i just got showered just got some coffee so ready to uh ready to talk about some stuff so today was like a really rainy day be able to take you on that trip with me but you know it turns out that there's not a whole lot that I could show from that I've been designing toys ever since I was a young child. My imagination would run with the toys that I had on hand and I would spend hours playing in the grass and on the hill. When it came to characters that weren't offered that I really liked from either reading their comic books or seeing them in cartoons, I would take to making those same characters out of the characters that I had. For instance, uh, you know, a certain version of Snake Eyes, I would cut up a Storm Shadow and make that version of Snake Eyes. Or uh, I remember there were quite a few He-Man characters that I would paint my other existing He-Man characters, like Faker. I'd turn He-Man blue to be Faker until they eventually they released one. But you know, there there was a lot of that type of play that went on, and I just never really stopped. You know, as I grew up, I remember uh, my. My grades were kind of failing in school and my mom said to me one time, she said, you know, how come you can't remember this thing about math or these equations, but you can remember every name of every Transformer and where they're from and what their powers and specialties are. I think that was right around the 10th grade and it was at that time that I decided I was going to look into what it would take to actually make a career out of doing that type of thing. GoPro camera housing. Might have who barred it. I fixed it. So I've always been into drawing comic books. Big pages, smaller pages, inky pages. 
lots of different things. <laughs> I've just been continuously dropping things this entire night. I almost fell on my skateboard over there. It's like just getting out of control. All right, we can talk about all that comic book stuff at another time, but what I really wanted to get into was toys. I've co-created and co-designed just tons and tons of action figures from all around the entertainment world. So the ones that I just kind of went through right there are some of the very earliest ones that I had the pleasure of working on. Um, and I owe a lot of that uh, initial success to a good friend named Jesse. So Jesse, thank you as always. I think I'm pretty sure to say thank you every time I see Jesse because it changed my life. You know, we worked together on a very early piece. I have a comic book somewhere called uh, Rex Gannon, The Indestructible Man. And it was from an art show that we had collaborated within that I actually got a job making these cool action figures. So we really wanted to start in the beginning. We'd have to go with this. Mortal Kombat. I was brought on pretty much as an intern to help uh, flesh out the design of these four figures to begin with. I think at that time I was just really handling the accessories and kind of refining some of the textures and things that were used to actually go into the armor bits here. You can see. It was just totally awesome. It was like a dream come true. My desk was like all the way in the back of the office next to the copier and the water cooler and it was tiny. And uh, I would just come in and sit down and draw all day and you know I would do the, the front, the, the back, the side, the top, the other side, the bottom, like just drawing everything from every perspective that I could. I'll, I'll fish up some art sometime, it's just, my stuff is kind of buried right now. But So quickly after Mortal Kombat, we, we launched those initial four figures. And they did okay, you know, they got into some cool places like KB Toys. Some of my samples actually still have the KB Toys sticker on them. Um, they get into, I think, Big Lots and a couple other more mass marketed places. So a lot of the toys that I've had the fortune of working on were for the mass market. So if you really look at like, you know, the McFarlane stuff or the, uh, the NECA stuff or any of that really collectible stuff that you would pick up for a lot of money at the comic book store. That was not the stuff that I was designing. The stuff that I was designing was for KB and for Toys R Us and for Walgreens or CVS and uh, Big Lots and, and then eventually we get into like Target and Walmart where you can find our stuff today. So then as a follow-up to the Mortal Kombat stuff, one of the next lines that I worked on was for its close competitor, Street Fighter. My favorite, absolute favorite game of all time is Street Fighter. So to work on this line was an absolute dream. You know, this is the first three figures we launched, Ken, Ryu, and Akuma. And then we followed that up. It was Sagat, um, Bison, and that looks like Chun-Li, but I don't think we ever actually produced Chun-Li, but I think that was her on the package there. Then we kind of followed that up with Guile. Um, we eventually we did Blanca and Vega and uh, so all of the characters in a round two coloration. So some of, the, some of the most hideous toys you've seen in that era um, were the, the M. Bison, who was like the aqua fresh green and pink. Oh, that was just like the best alternate color. And uh, we did Guile in his navy blue regalia. But anyway, I was, I was always a Ken, Ken Masters kind of player. So another really cool thing about working on this line was Joe Mad did the box art here. So this was all original to us. You can see it's like his trademark style is amazingly well coordinated by the folks over at Capcom and just a real highlight of my career there. So a little bit more down the road, 
and sorry there's there's kind of a lot of dust on this package but we did the uh, the Shaolin Monks extension of the Mortal Kombat line eventually um, but these are two characters that I'm really proud of uh, designing you know uh, we worked with a really noteworthy sculptor on this pack uh, he was a McFarlane guy I think his name was Rocco and they just turned out amazing it's really hard to tell on the camera but you can see uh, Sub-Zero's arms are injected in clear blue and they're kind of like flecked with this frosty paint job on there. And Scorpion came with the spear and an alternate hand that you can kind of pop out and pop in. Really, really cool. The tape's still sealed on these or I would unbox them, but they're going to have to stay in there. The classic Mega Man line was a really, really great, really robust line. Uh, I worked on it a little bit, but for the most part, Jesse was the extreme creative force behind this. I did help, you know, to do some of the views, and and we collaborated a lot on like the character selection and uh, the paint deco and stuff. But for the most part, this entire amazing line of action figures was all credited to Jesse. I mean, he just really knocked it out of the park with this. You can see we did the Mega Man X extension. We had the classic Mega Man. Jesse has gone on to, of course, many bigger and greater things. Uh, he currently has a show. I'll put one of, the, one of the notes here. It's called Toy Pizza. Definitely go check it out. Definitely subscribe. It's one of the best shows on YouTube. I love it. For a toy enthusiast, a toy collector, uh, Jesse and his crew over there at Toy Pizza just constantly bring entertainment. Great toy history, great upcoming features, great reviews and unboxings. Toy Pizza. Pizza out. This line here was really, really cool. So, the most iconic look of Mega Man was, of course, Mega Man 1, the 16-bit, totally pixelated Mega Man character. Uh, this was one of the first lines that uh, we we really drove home a lot of what was uh, what was contemporary at the time. So, urban vinyl style toys were, you know, very popular. This was in 2005. And what this line actually incorporated was a Build-A-Figure. You can see all of the all of the figures came with a piece of a charged Mega Man figure. And if you buy all the figures separately, you could combine them to produce, what do we call it? Full Charge Mega Man. He had this really cool kind of iridescent paint job on him. Uh, you can see the head of the character peeking out there. Shadow Man, he was one of my favorite villains. So that's kind of like a, a cheap and cheerful intro to some, just like a very tip of the iceberg of toys that I've helped make and along with my buddy Jesse, that's a pretty good sample of how we got our start in toys. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought about that. It's it's a little bit of a stream of consciousness. I, I wish that I had a better setup for product photography, but I'm working pretty bare bones right now. I'm gonna see what I can do to get some, you know, some more appropriate toys to unbox and give a little bit of a review around. It wasn't really a review, that was more like a, an intro to my history in toys, but I started in around 1999 or 2000 and I've been doing it pretty much ever since so uh, I'm really fortunate I haven't worked a day in 18 years and uh, thanks Jesse thanks to you guys for watching and thanks to the guys at Toy Pizza for uh, being awesome